Hello, here Otaku. This is another exclusive interview. We're going back to Fujiyama Ichiban, and this time we're going to be interviewing stuntman Travis Hall, who portrays Rockman Red in all the action scenes. Hello, Travis. Hi, how you doing? All right. Th- thanks for being here today. Uh, good to have you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Uh, first off, uh, our basic questions are just pretty much, um, what got you involved with stunt acting, and did any of Saban's productions as a kid inspire you to want to become a stuntman? All right. Um, the way this all started, I was actually trying to become a director. And um, I was taking classes at uh, CSUN, um, Valley College, just to like, get my um, general ed out the way, see if I could do directing work. And I figured out I didn't like it. So I tried acting, and I didn't like it. But what I did like to do when I was a kid was like play fight and, um, you know, just like, um, yeah, do play fighting, have fun around. And I'm like, what do- what job does that? And it was a stuntman. So what got me into that was I was looking for stunt schools online and there was none really in California except um, Samurai Action Studios, which was still kind of far from me. So I went to go give that a try. I'm thinking this is a, a this is a class. Like I didn't know it was anywhere associated with Tokusaku, Fujiyama Ichiban or anything like that. So uh, I went there for like two months and then all of a sudden Michi, Mr. Yamato, was like, oh, can you do a show for me? And I'm like, oh, sure, why not? So then <clears throat> I did one show for a live show before we started doing the episodes. And uh, I started doing stunt work for him and learning a lot more from him. So he taught me everything I knew. And what got me like, into all this Tokusaku is I've always been a fan of Power Rangers, Big Bad Beat Awards, anime, all that stuff. Oh, I've I'm, always sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, there's a sound coming in from your side. I don't know if it's your keyboard or something. It's kind of Oh, kinda yeah? Cool. Can you hear that? Sorry yeah. That. Let me just pick that up. Can you hear it now? As you were saying earlier, you, you, you are a fan of Saban's shows, uh, Power Rangers and Beetleborgs and stuff like that. Uh, which shows did you actually like like more? Uh, and Do you have any favorite scenes? Um, the ones I like more? All right. Yeah. So when I was little, I did watch Saban. Now I'm older, I watched the, more of the Japanese series. <laughs> So when I was little, I did like Big Bad Beetleboards more than Power Rangers. And um, I don't remember what season. I just knew I like it. But now my whole favorite thing is Koga- um, Go Kaiju. I forgot which one's out. The, the one with the uh, the pirate Power Rangers. Oh, yeah. Um, Go Kaiju, which was the 35th anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. The, gate- that's the gateway my, drug. Yeah. That one's my favorite season ever. Like, I just love that. That, that one. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> and uh, how actually were you introduced to the Japanese tokusatsu? Was it through uh, Mr. Yamato, or was it through other fan groups? Actually, I've, oh, I think I've always been into it since I was little, and then I just happened to like get a job in it when I met Mr. Yamato. So like when I was little, I always followed it. Say my dad pretty much introduced me into it <laughs> All right. without his knowledge. <laughs> but yeah, I get, a lot of I know a lot of guys say, but yeah, my dad was like a fan because he watched Godzilla and Ultraman. So when he saw Power Rangers, he's like, oh, I'll let my kid watch these. Yeah, like, <laughs> he's not much of a fan as I am, though. But like, he was like, okay, cool. All right. Uh, so when trying to be a stuntman, uh, what's the proper training and practice like when taking these classes? Oh, okay. Uh, the best thing to know before even trying to do any stunt work is you should learn martial arts at like, any type of dojo. Doesn't doesn't matter what martial arts it is. Just learn the basic form of fighting. <clears throat> uh, another big rule is safeties first. Like you might see a lot of people, um, you know, do flips off of a, a ledge or something, fall down, get hurt. All that is practice and um, controlled. So safety is number one. Like, they will never let you do anything that they deem not safe or they feel like you cannot do. So you would need to learn how to fall. I've always learned that one since I was a little kid, so that, that was pretty easy for me. So fighting, falling, and, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty much all you need. Depends on what you're doing stunts for because there's different stunts. There's um, stunts where you ride motorcycles, cars, stunts for falling, stunts for skydiving, stunts for um, – fighting which is what i i excel in there's stunts for um jumping out of planes helicopters stuff like that 
swimming. So there's all types of stunts. So whatever um, stunt you're interested in, you need um, training in that specific field. Gymnastics also helps out too for just everything. Uh, could you also tell me what are some of the hardest ones for, for you picking up when you were, were starting out? Oh, those are um, sky falls, meaning that if I have to jump off something high because I do have a fear of heights. So that's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I haven't uh, done any of – I'm sorry? Oh, no. I was just going to ask, were you able to actually master your fear, be able to get no, over that? No, I, I'm not sure yet. I haven't done anything – you haven't had me do anything like that yet. But if I need to, so far I've been doing them. <laughs> so it's yeah. like if, if, if it was a fear of heights, I wouldn't know if it's the height that scares me at, you're saying. No, it's it's funny though because I know it's safe. Like if I, if I were to jump off, I know like if I hit the pads – it won't hurt or anything. I think it's just me and the height thing. Like, uh, cause I know if I fall on there, I'll be okay. There, there's no doubt about it. I think it's just me looking down. So it's more like once he says, actually, I just got to do it. Cause if I stop, then I'll start like freaking out and like looking like, Oh man, it's high. Like, so yeah. once you hear action, it's the heat of the moment. And yeah, you just got to really go for it. down. All right. Yeah. That's, that's good. That's good to know. Uh, that's probably the best way to conquer fear in a sense is like get into the mood where it won't affect you. Yeah, because once once he says action, I'm not Travis anymore. I'm my character. So, <clears throat> um, do you have uh any ways to like tell people like what's good health tips for stunt people and ways to stay in shape? Because I know you guys have to be super athletic, depending on what degree of stunt work you do. Hmm. Well, I guess well, pretty much cut fast food out of your life if you're gonna be a stunt man. <laughs> Um, also, um, also I don't drink any, like pretty much when you're a stomach, you can eat whatever you want, but nothing where, um, where it's too bad. Like, like fast food, I cut that out. I don't drink any soda. So like juices, water, energy drinks, those are good for you. Um, try to eat whenever you can your vegetables. I mean, like, like. Try to like like eat home cooked meals, and also you need to um, do your cardio, work out. You don't necessarily need to lift weights if you want to, you can, but mostly cardio, just keeping fit. Like you know, just try to not get a gut, and then you should be good to do any stunt work. You should be um, be able to have the energy to do the the role you're given that you need to do. So the basic is is like. You want to? The only time you want to have fast food is like on that day, day, day of relax. It's like, all right, I'm on vacation. That means I can have stunt food at least once or twice, twice on yeah, vacation. Pretty much. It's more like, okay, um, we're done with the whole season. All right, um, yeah, let's go chill. Let's go eat at McDonald's, In and Out, or something. So pretty much, like, it's like sports with the off season. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right, that, that yeah. that's the best way I can kind of. Yeah, you don't want to like do fast food like right away, <laughs> like especially before a shoot. Now, it's interesting that my next question is, uh, how did you come to meet Mr. Yamamoto, and how did you work for it? it? Pretty much, you just nailed that with the first question. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, when you were originally casted to be on the stage shows, were you intentionally given the role of Rockman Red, or were you another character, and do you share any other suit roles on the show? Hmm. Okay, I, I can tell you the ones that people have seen already. I can't tell you the next season that he'll put up. So, yeah, uh, I was just wondering yeah. if you've uh, actually done more than one role, or is that oh, just, are you so, soul stuck to red? No, oh, I think I'm probably permanently stuck to red, I'm not sure, <laughs> but um, before I was Hong Kong, the pig, you were, uh, I don't his, his think I've live show. Yeah, it uh, was in a live show, I was uh, the pig for my first show ever, and then after that, I've been playing Rockman Red. And I'm pretty sure you're not the voice of Rockman Red either. It's just you as the body, correct? Uh, I'm the voice of Rockman Red. Oh, you <laughs> are the voice? I was like, okay, because I don't see that in the casting, or at least I can't see it. Oh, it's in the credits. If you watch the episodes, they'll say that. Okay. So yeah, I, mean, I, I, sure I can say it since it's already there. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 like, cause I'm looking at the seats, and I, I can sometimes, I can sometimes make out what it says in the credits, and other times I can't. Yeah, because the credits actually roll very fast. For, yeah, it does. For how to brief the show? Yeah, if you're in. a pause, they'll say I'm the voice of Rockman Red. Yeah, yeah, because like <laughs> listening to you, you don't really sound like the same voice at times. But I'm like sitting there, I'm like maybe. Oh, it's because like, um, I'm sick guys... right now. 
I was gonna say, do you guys use also um, you guys also use uh, what do you call it? Amplifiers, right? You change the voice and stuff a bit so people don't know it's you guys all the time. No, I don't think you can. Let me see if I can do it. Let's see. Uh, Fuji, I'm, yeah, I can't do it. I'm sick. Yeah, I can't even do the voice right now. <laughs> Eat you back. Like, <clears throat> yeah, my voice is out. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's interesting. Cause I'm sitting there, like, like talking to you. I'm like, this doesn't even sound like the same same <laughs> guy does the voice. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, it's like, Red Ray! Yeah, I can't do it. My voice is totally soared up. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can blame Mr. Yamato for that. You made my voice go out! Oh, oh no. Yes. No, we did the voiceover already. I, it was just, I was like, oh, man, my voice is like out. Yeah, so maybe next time I can probably do it. I think that's actually interesting because I rarely know, uh, even in American shows, the guy who's the suit actor being the voice, actual voice. Yeah, it was I'm weird. Scared. That was weird, yeah. Because, <laughs> like, you're probably doing it in your normal voice, just reading the lines when you're on the set, but then when you're back doing the voiceover, you're putting it in, like, the character voice, probably. Oh, okay. you know what's funny? Um, When we were on set, I didn't know I was going to be the voice. So we were messing around. Like, we would mess around. <laughs> like, voices, we'll just make up little voices. And, like, we'll just, like, say it like that. Oh, sorry. It's not, that sound's coming back. Sorry, it's just cutting into the... Oh, sorry. Um, uh, Normally, when... um. When, uh, yeah, when we did the, um, the normal roles, like, we were just, like, pantomiming the, the lines, we were just saying whatever. We didn't think we were, like, we were going to be the voices of it. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, so, you guys, so you guys would try to, like, bust jokes on each other, I'm guessing. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and then, like, oh, you're the voice. We're like, oh, what? Like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That, yeah. So, I, uh, can I ask a question then? Uh, are the other Rockmen the voices too? Mm, I'll say look on the credits and you'll know your answer. <laughs> so, so you're like, uh, yeah, like, like I can't even see. Like, like, I, can't even I don't see know that. if I'm allowed to say it. That's why. I mean, but it's on the credits, so it's like, it's not like. Yeah, yeah I can't. Can, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, because like, sometimes I'm just sitting there like, yeah. Um, these credits roll a little too fast. I'm like, what is this? A, what is this, a, sh- a, a, a show on TV where it's like, oh, we got to go to the next show. Zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> zoom, zoom. Yeah. Well, how would you, how would you actually describe the uh, character for Rockman Red? Oh, that that took a lot of. I think I think he's he's me. <laughs> like when I go into um, when I go into uh, my when I act like a villain. I think Michi just said, Rock, you're just Rockman Red. That's just the way you are when you're a villain. You are ruthless and mean, but you can be funny. And that's what he wants. So Rockman Red initially is supposed to be uh, a, a dark samurai general type type character. Like, you know, like uh, in like your little samurai movies where there's like that, that one bad guy samurai, but he's just like... Uh, like, um, like I will destroy you, and my honor shall not be like. Okay, so you're saying he's supposed to be like um, the base, the kind of straight up honor, but super serious. But at the same time, like he he's not as serious as he's made out to be. Yes, like like it's like like looking like a, like he's keeping up an appearance, <laughs> but like he's trying to like follow through with it. Like I kind I think I kind of created his personality because I tried to do it like Mitchie wanted, but he's just. Say you're doing good, just do what you're doing, and I'm like, oh, okay. So it's I kind like, of, huh, guy? Okay. No, no, oh, sorry, no, I was gonna say because I I can see it with the motions because like you and a few of the other suit actors really can capture the controls to like the old '90s suit acting. <laughs> oh, thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Cause like if you guys don't put the right body motion in it, where you're like you're you're thrusting your head as if you're rocking out and like doing like the you know like the great job like clench your fist and like go yeah nailed it like like I'm like <laughs> I don't believe you guys I'm like God like I can't even believe this thing this doesn't feel like Toku to me like yeah I've kind of put some of my um, own little um, mannerisms in there even though it's not meant to be in there but since I do it so much it became Rockman Red. And a lot of people don't even notice it, so I don't know if I want to even let that secret out. Yeah, I, I would say don't let those secrets out because <laughs> uh, even in Japan, uh, suit actors have, you know, like a stance or a stature to them where if even if you don't look at their credits, you can kind of guess who they are by 
movements they do when they portray other characters. Yeah. Because if you ever watch Sentai, you can sometimes see throughout the years if the same Red Senshi is portrayed by the same stunt actor because mm-hmm. of how he takes his stance or how he crosses his arms or how he signals a certain way. Oh, that's true. Most of them are not even played by the same dude, though. Yeah, they, they usually actually uh, the Red Senshis are normally played by the same guy, which is good which is usually the one that you can usually pick up. But once in a blue moon, they give you a curveball, and you find out, no, he's playing blue. And you're like, wait, what? Yeah, you're like, wait a minute, hold up. <laughs> like, switch that back. Because, like, I, 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 I gotta say, with American um, Toku, it's always been usually the same base team. Because we're, yeah. we're, we're smaller niche. We're smaller niche. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Because even I, I, when watching... um. Uh, Fujiyama Ichiban, I sometimes <laughs> even wonder myself, is, like, Mr. Yamato doing it again? <laughs> oh, you know, like, he's done some of the suit acting? Uh, yeah, he, well, he, he was a suit actor for Mask Rider. Yeah. The Bond's Mask yeah. Rider in that. He so was I was awesome. just wondering, because I was just wondering, does he ever does he ever sometimes fill in for his shows as well, like stage shows or what? Oh, for, s- not anymore, he used to, not anymore. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so since you pretty much are the are Rockman Red, like mannerisms and body movements, uh, have you had any issues when performing in the suit? Uh, like, is there vision issues, or does the cape get in the way? The cape is the, my number one enemy, dude. <laughs> Especially in live shows, my number one enemy is that cape because um, I like to do a lot of stunt. Like when I'm Rockman Red, I like to put like try to do all the stunts, like like. He'll say, like, if you guys need to, like, let's say I get defeated by Fujiyama Ichiban, if I need to flip, like, or get tripped, like, I'll do something amazing to, like, portray that I got hurt. And every time I do something like that, that cape's always in my face, always on one side of, the other side of my arm, and, like, there's just no way to fix it, and I just gotta push the whole scene looking weird with my cape all, like, dismantled. Like, that's the one thing I can, I, I cannot get over is that cape. Like, <laughs> it needs to go. <laughs> like, I, I sometimes always wondered why the cape was so long compared to, like, how some tokus are. Is like, if it's a long cape, they either rip it off halfway through the fight and use it as, like, you know, kind of the old-fashioned I'm going to blind my opponent with and try to yeah. back them in it. Or it's usually, like, a short short cape like the Mystic Force uh, Maji Rangers have. Yeah, like, it yeah. It goes down to their belt. So it doesn't get fully in the way, mm-hmm. and I and I, I was wondering, does that thing cause a lot of problems? Because it looks like the fabric it has too has a lot of f- flow in it, so you guys will most likely get whipped by it. Oh yeah, yeah. It just it causes problems more for me than anyone else. It's easier for anyone else, but like I have found ways to like fix it, like through my own manner mannerisms. Yeah. Now, is vision easy in the suits? Because I know it's not the... normally. The Rockman suits, vision is very easy. Like, that's the... The Rockman suits are the easiest things to see through. Um, what characters do you guys know in Pujama so far? So I don't spoil anything. Um, thus far, we know of the te- the the Shadow Tengu because he's been promoted, like, all over the place before the d- episode debuted. Okay. Uh, the weird green thing with, like, the okay. weird, like, three eyes. Oh, you don't know his name yet, right? I don't know. I, I, I think his name's on the website. Oh, okay. Featured in the stage shows. Okay. Um, there, there's one other kaijin, and then there's youth, youth three of the Rockman and Sakura Ninja. And, okay. Yeah, we know the base heroes. We know the base grunts, Dark Matter, and three of the monster suits due to the credits and I think the website promoting you guys fighting with them or against them. Okay. Then the hardest vision has to be for me. I would say it would have to be Hungry, the green monster suit. Yeah. Okay. So you are hungry at times, or just in the stage shows? Let's just say we've all put on these suits. <laughs> oh, everyone had yeah. to like try it on once, just to. Just we've to all it. we've all worn it. So like, I won't say what character I played not until the next season comes out. <laughs> but yeah, so we've all played a character, and I'd say hungry is probably the hardest one to see through. And is he also a hard one to control? Oh no. Um. Kind of, I guess. Because, like, it looks very stocky when you got, like, from the images I've seen of it. It looks very bulky and and hard and cumbersome. Oh, we'll wait for Hungry later because he'll he'll come out in the next one, I think. (laughs) Yeah, I know um, that the next episodes are uh, Sakura's debut. Yes. 
Yeah. So Tengu, his vision's also hard, but he's so easy to move in with. Yeah, because um, he's like a giant head on uh, like a robe. Yeah. Fujiyama, they tell me he's hard, but I don't think his vision's hard. I'm not sure. Ninja's vision is very easy. Um, I don't know Sakura at all, but I'm assuming she's easy to see through. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think right. the hardest would have to be to see through would be Hungry and Tengu. And Fujiyama. Yeah, I'm guessing because it was actually, I know, um, Fujiyama was constructed in Japan. Were, were, were your shirts constructed in Japan? Yeah, they're all constructed in Japan. Okay, I, I I know Mr. Yamada said he for the heroes he focused on those being very constructed in Japan. I wasn't sure if he made all of them in Japan. Wait, all right. Well, at least the Rockman. At least that's what he told me. I, I'm, I'm guessing. Let's I, just say Rockman are half and half, half Japan, half American. Yeah, I I kind of thought that with the, the the way that the body suits were made. I I could tell by the armor it had to be Japan, but the body yeah, suits were very like that. It's like that. Yeah. <laughs> I know Fujiyama straight up was like, like, oh hey, I I got I, I called the friend up in Japan and he made the suits and uh, and there they are and I was like that is awesome. Yeah, they they those suits look awesome. Like, um, nice what are your man. thoughts? So, what are your thoughts on the suits? Whether it be your suit, the other rock men, or at least the heroes that we know of. Oh, dude, I love the way the suits look, man. Like, uh, Rockman's suits, like, they're kind of. Like a little tight, like not tight. But I mean, like it just shows everything. So it's like you gotta wear extra stuff under. The ninja suit, I fell in love with that one when I first saw it. When he was like, "Hey guys, look, uh, I got a new suit." And I'm like, "Who's that?" He's like, "Oh, we got a new uh, hero, ninja." And we saw that suit. We're like, "Oh, that suit looks so awesome!" Like, yeah, ninja suit's probably like my favorite suit ever. Yeah, I, I gotta say, I, I like that one and uh, the basic uh, Sun Taiyo Fujiyama suit. I, I like that one. I think it's because I like I'm a huge stickler for the reds and then, like yeah. the blue the blue ninja. I'm like it just looks like a ninja to me. So I'm like it works. It's it's amazing. Uh, now yeah. this, is a, this is actually a personal opinion. Would you like mm-hmm. to see like the suits, like the main heroes and the Rockmen receive upgrades like Tokusatsu's normally get? Would you like to see uh, how they would get upgraded, or or do you have any ideas on what you would want if Michi asked you? Would you like to see your suit evolve? Uh, can we skip that question? <laughs> oh, I'm guessing that already happened. Okay, no, then. I don't know. I I'm just not gonna say nothing on that one. <laughs> Okay, so can you tell me what have been your favorite parts working with Mr. Yamato, working with the cast, and pro- at not producing, but actually being on the stage shows and recording the series? Like, oh, everything and above. Part? My favorite yeah, like part has parts. to be the moment before we start a scene. Those are my favorite parts, because everyone in the whole Fujiyama crew is so, like respected towards each other like we're all good friends like there's there's actually there's no fights at all in um in in the sets at all there's no yelling there's nothing it's like it's like we could be joking at one point we could be all just laughing or whatever and once Michi's like okay let's start boom everyone's ready to go everyone stops what they're doing we're all ready to go pick it up right after the scene of what we were talking about like it's just so it it comes all together like so well and my favorite ones are with Adam when, you know, I know you guys seen parts where Rockman Red fights Adam. Just yeah, it's in the first four right? episodes. So, like, me and Adam had a little rivalry going on because I'm always messing with him. So, <laughs> I th- Wait, I, are you the guy who posts photos of him when he's asleep and try to put them up on the internet? Oh, yeah, I did one once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, like, I remember, I remember Yuki said, yeah, uh, one of our other castmates who you need to talk to, like, takes photos of us when we're sleeping and tries to catch us on said sleeping. And I'm like, oh, I need to meet this guy. This sounds like my kind of dude. Dude, it's because, like, they're sleeping so peacefully. It's just like, how can you not take a picture? It was like, some of them just look funny. Like, like I literally sat, sat there and was like, this reminds me of what they, what the uh, original MMPR Rangers did to Steve Cardenas to terrorize him on set. <laughs> they catch but, him sleeping. But yeah, like, me and Adam became, like, really good friends, even though we're kind of, like, robberies, because, like, every, t- even though, like, we weren't in character, we'd always treat it like we were enemies, because I'm the bad guy, he was the good guy. So, 
It'd be more like this. Like, when every time Michi was like, okay, ready? You guys remember your choreo? Me and Adam, like, yeah, we good. And every time before he would say, every time he would say action, me and Adam would do like a little, a bump knuckle fist. Like, a, what's up, bro? Let's do this. Bam. And we just start getting into character and like, and like start fighting. It would be so amazing on that part. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, like, when I watch that, I'm sitting there, like, sometimes I'm like, I wonder, like, do you guys ever sit in and watch each other's, like, scenes, like, when, like, he's out of suit just doing other stuff, or are you always prepared just on the side waiting for, like, the fight scenes? Oh, uh, normally we're just, um, before the fight scenes, we're, we're probably in our suits, but we're just, like, it, it's kind of weird, because we're in our suits, but we're, like, doing normal things, so you're, like, you'll see, like, a rock man holding, like, a can of soda or juice, and, like, like, well, since people can't see us, but, like, the other cast members are just, like, looking, like, you see a rock man in a chair, just, like, buddy-buddy being all nice, until he says action, and you see him get all mean and evil, like. Now, uh, here's, here's a question. When you're at the conventions and stuff, or at the shows, uh, do you find it funny, though, like, when the younger kids still think you're a bad guy, even when the, like, you know, the show's over? Oh, man, you understand how many kids cried. <laughs> dude all right okay so uh, um the latest one at miyaka hybrid hotel oh the one that yeah. uh we we we, we were uh, promoted on the posters oh you, you're yeah okay <clears throat> so um hungry was there and um all right the kids they they kind of don't find me scary more like they feel like they need to defeat me like, they feel like they can take me for some reason. I don't know why. Probably because Ujama <laughs> can defeat me so easily. But when they see Hungry, they, like, they do not like that, dude. <laughs> like, you can just hear one kid just start crying because he just walks in. Like, he hasn't, like, all he did was one motion. Like, Hungry! And then, like, they just start crying. Like, they cannot. They think that dude's scary. They also think Dark Tango is scary as too. Actually, he is scary. I'm looking at his mask. Like, as like, a kid, I could probably see it. I could see, see Yeah, it. like, he's just scary. But, like, a lot of kids want to defeat Rockman Red. Maybe because I'm a little cocky when I when I started getting the character, and I'm just like, ha, ah, Fujiyama can't defeat me, even though I'm, like, losing half the time. Like, <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing that whole, ah, I'm the greatest, and everyone sees you getting your, your butt kicked all over the, over yeah, the that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty, yeah, that's that hypocrite. That's what he is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah, a lot of kids they find the 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 bad guy that's mostly scary. But like once they find uh, once they're with Fujama, Sakura, and Ninja, they're they're pretty much they got all their little confidence, feel like they can take on the world. You know, it's, it's nice. I like I like seeing that. Yeah, because I know I've seen you like doing promotional <laughs> shots with um the the Fujiyama suit. I, I've seen like a couple at least. I'm sitting there. I'm like, what do you kids normally do? Like when you guys are like taking photos as like groups and stuff. I'm like, oh, like, some <laughs> of them like freeze up. Like they're just stiff. And, like, they're just, like, oh, my, like, it's more like they can't believe they're meeting this dude. Like, that's how the, some of their reactions are. And then so, some of them, yeah. But when they see you guys, like, actually acting nice for, like, group shots, do they ever, like, go, wait, what's going on? Oh, no, if I'm in the Rockman character, I can't be nice. So I'm always um, a bad guy. So if I have that mask on, I can't show any type of, like, you know, like, oh, hey, guys, I'm Rockman. Uh, hi, how are you guys doing? Like. I have to uh, play the role like I'm a bad guy. Okay. Yeah, so I like, got the Morphicon. <clears throat> we were promoting Fujiyama Ichiban. Um, Fujiyama was walking around, but since I was still in the Rockman mask, um, I was holding our donation bucket, but like more like I was captured, so I was kind of like irritated and annoyed at people. <laughs> like, whatever, give us, donate or whatever. Like, you know, like just like not caring for them. Like that's how I had to act until I got out of the suit. <laughs> so like if someone wanted to give you a high five you'd be like psych you ain't get one <laughs> i probably would i'll just look at him like all like evil like but then if i were to do that fujiyama would come and you know like slap me around a little bit like straighten up like that, that'd be pretty funny if like they have the fold up like paper fan he just like comes over and whacks you in the back <laughs> right. like you should, you should you should tell mr yamato you should that idea get the old-fashioned like japanese like fold up fan like when you're make, being forced to do the donation box, like, if you start cutting up, like, he just comes over with you. <laughs> right, but start taking the donation box, run, like... <laughs> yeah. That actually yeah. be a good comedy sketch. You get, like, guys do, like, a... What is it? A Betty Hill-like thing where you're running around with the donation box <laughs> for a promotional video. 
Yeah, well, yeah. So once that mask is on, I can't. I can't be good. <laughs> I'm a bad guy. Or so, I have to make a comedy. So when you were at um, Power Morphicon, did you actually have time to like be out of suit and like be at the table greeting people, or were you oh. mostly in suit? Oh no, no. Mostly uh, the Fujiyama stuntmen were in the suits. I had more, a lot more free time than they did. Because, like, I was only there for a little bit, and then I can just go out and, you know, have fun, meet the other Power, Power Ranger um, cast members and all that. So, uh, yeah, I had a lot of free time. So, like, when you were meeting up with, like, the other cast members, did you, like, tell them, yeah, I'm rocking on red, but, you know, we can't say that out loud? <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, no, I didn't say that to anybody. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, my sec- this is my secret identity is Travis Hall, but That's I'm really rocking red. <laughs> no, nah, I didn't say that. Some of them did catch on, though, but... Like, just without me saying anything. I think because they heard my voice, and they're just like, oh, that has to be you. Like, because right now you're hearing me, like, with, I kind of have a sore throat, so you can't hear the voice. So <clears throat> when they heard it, they're like, are you rocking? I'm like, I don't know. They're like, you have to be. I'm like, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. What? Who, who, I, went, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Huh? Who's <laughs> like, this Rockman Red? What, what is that? <laughs> That's a like. Like I I, I I gotta say I would be like that one guy in the cast that pretends that it's a knockoff show when like people ask me about <laughs> on the show what 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 that bootleg power nah man all <laughs> right nah, I'm just a stuntman for hire what what are you what are you talking about I mean hey if they want to hire me that's great but why 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 would you slander my name by being such exactly, a bad right? man <laughs> like why do I gotta be the bad guy like <laughs> hey I could be Fujiyama Fuji- Ichiban yeah, yeah okay he's standing right there yeah okay I'm not. <laughs> Just go bump it off. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, that actually I've... be an awesome, inter- awesome and interesting episode. Switch, switch the braids of Rockman Fred with Uchiyama and Ichiba. <laughs> <laughs> that we're just sitting here, like, like I'm, I'm sitting here laughing, and you're like sitting there, like, wait a second, Leech doesn't have that idea down. Write it down now. <laughs> well, switch the the stunt team, like make the Yama <laughs> stunt man into a Rockman Red, and like just Rockman. switch the brains in a sense, so it's acting like that. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Because, you know, there's well, always that Toku with the monster. Like, so. We kind of did something. Kind of did something like that. But, no, like, we didn't switch the brain. It's more like... I don't even know if I'm allowed to say it. It's weird. See, I don't know what I'm supposed to say, what I'm not supposed to say. Like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I know. Like, cause when I play... When, when, I, when I played the... Uh, the fishnet game, as as someone would like to say, as an interviewer, I was able to get away with some more stuff with Yuki than I could with Adam. Like, Adam was, like, so conservative... And, like, Yuki was like, oh, I can tell you what I, I – I can tell you. I'm pretty sure Michi won't be too bad. I'm like, as long as I don't reveal too much. I'm like, okay. Well, yeah. Well, I guess I can tell you because this was a lot during a live show where uh, Michi goes, Chavez. I'm like, yeah. He's like, it, it was – all it was, it was a live show for a school. And it was right. only Fujiyama versus Rockman Red. That's all it was. But Michi goes, oh, yeah, you guys are going to switch. And me and um, Shota, who plays Fujiyama – uh, me and Shota are like, we're switching? Like, what? <laughs> so Shota went in Rockman Red and I went in Fujiyama. And it was so weird. Because I, I never play. I, like, I'm not really good at being a good guy. So I felt kind of dominant as Fujiyama. I was like, that was a little evil side a little bit there. When I was fighting Shota and he was playing a bad guy. But he seemed more like he was good. It was, it was really weird. Like, we're like, can we just not switch anymore? <laughs> like, I think it was more like he wanted to see if you guys could share the role, if ever need be. I know, right? Like, it was weird. It was <laughs> yeah. a test. It was a test, and obviously, you may have failed. <laughs> you probably have, yeah. It's like, yeah, so, like, I was Fujiyama Ichiban, and I was just uber dominant. Like, nah, man, I wouldn't let him even get a even a single hit in when I was supposed to. No sell. No sell. Like, yeah, it, it was weird. Yeah, it was because, like, Shota, like, I guess he was a bad guy, but, like, he did something Rockman Red never does. So, like, when, when he... Were, shield kick. <laughs> it was weird, like, when he, um, when, when we were spi- when we were gonna start the fight, like, he did, like, this really massive battle cry, and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to get all, like, tough on him, too, so we just started fighting, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, like, that's an interesting story that, that is yeah. interesting uh, yeah but the, yeah because I, I forgot to actually ask like some of, some of your co-stars um what are the favorite parts actually working on the show so i'm like you know what? i'll ask a stunt man because it's probably going to be more interesting <laughs> yeah uh, there's probably more stuntmen than actors in there 
I really think there is. Sometimes I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I'm like, I'm sitting here like, yeah, I'm pretty sure Adam's just sitting in the chair watching, watching uh, the Toei actor or the guy who came from Japan <laughs> as uh, Fujiyama Ichiban. It's just like, all right, now, just just kick him, beat him, oh, beat him now. That, that's actually kind of funny there because uh, he says his line in Japanese is so funny. <laughs> so 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 you're saying so he'll be saying his lines in Japanese and you'll be sitting there going I don't even understand what's going on. No, we we understand him because we know the script, so we know what he's saying. But it's just funny. So it'll be like me, Rockman Red, like Fujiyama Ichiban. How you think you can defeat us? And he'll say he'll reply. He understands English, so he'll reply in Japanese. So it's like a little like like he'll be like hi. Hey. Mina, because that like it's just really weird. Like it's like okay. <laughs> so you're like saying if like say so he if like tomorrow Mr. Yamato said, oh this guy's sick. I'm bringing in this guy as a tryout for today. And like if he was battling him, he would be like, wait, what did he just say to me? And just like get, yeah, like, like take a punch in the face, not expecting it. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, we find it kind of funny. We we like it though. So when Adam has to do his voiceover when the Fujiyama, he has to like read the line again because the guy's saying it in Japanese. <laughs> like, I could just imagine being on set, though, like, while you're fighting the suit, you're, like, Adam's over there, like, in a chair, just waving at you, going, hi. Oh, that's, that's how me, that's how Adam gets me, though. Because every time we fight, when he's out of costume and I'm Rockman Red, I'm always beating him. So, <laughs> so Rockman Red's always beating up Sun because he's not in his suit. So then, like, Adam goes, okay, you, you can keep winning, huh? He's like, just wait till I start winning. I'm like, what do you mean till you start winning? And then, like, uh... <laughs> the Fujiyama act would come and he's like right here this will be defeating you that's technically me so like every time like I'm getting beat by Fujiyama you see Adam waving like yeah that was me like <laughs> wow that that is a whole moment right there yeah I'm gonna be defeating you soon when's that when the stunt actor gets here damn right I'll see you I'll see you after Adam I'll see you in the parking lot yeah pretty I'll, I'll, much I'll make sure to bring the stunt I'll make sure to bring the stunt man damn it <laughs> Foiled again. You can fight though. You can fight. That's one thing. That's how um uh why we're so well connected to each other. Even if you're an actor, Michi will still have you come to the class. Whether your your acting role has fighting in it or not, you will train with us. Like he, you will train with the stuntman, just so we can get the have familiarity with each other. You know. Yeah, since I haven't seen the episodes in a while, were you one of the extras when they do the school scenes? Because, like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I saw you as one of the extras. School scenes? Like, which one? Like, when they're at the dojo. Uh, which guy do you think I was? <laughs> well, I don't know. I think I've seen your face. So I'm just sitting there, I'm like, I'm like, do I have to say? I'm like, there's, like, only, like, two, two different people there all the time. <laughs> I mean, I can see your icon right now. I'm pretty sure, sure you were one of them in the in the episode where they were, they were talking about the lion versus the fox. Oh, I don't know, dude. I can just go. <laughs> I know you. Like I said, you can go look at it. I didn't say anything. <laughs> okay, okay. He's not in suit. Okay, we can use him as one of the other students at the dojo. Okay. <laughs> hey, it's true. So you can. I'm not in the suit. All right, so I got a question. Are there any times like where you look, like uh, where you're sitting in on watching like other scenes being filmed? Like, do you give any like like do you make any like jibs or jabs at, like the scene? Because oh uh, what... man, we have so many. I think we, <laughs> I think we, we we were making fun of so many of them. that you deleted some of them. Because <laughs> there, there, there's this one scene in particular that me and my friends kind of sat there and said WTF, and mm-hmm. it's the flashback episode in like two or three where Sun's supposed to be, like, eight years old, wearing the baseball cap backwards, and it's just Adam doing the scene, asking his oh, dad nice. about darkness and light. And no offense, like, I told Yuki this, I, I couldn't stop laughing at that scene. Like, I was sitting here going, oh, my God, I feel like I need a beer for this one. Okay, he wasn't supposed to be eight. He was supposed to be 15. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it was so bad, like, I think I saw the interview, uh, I saw, I, no, not the interview, I saw the episode right when I was going to interview Mr. Yamato, and I wanted to ask him about that, but, like, <laughs> my, my COO was like, don't even ask him anything, don't ask him why his son is white, don't ask him why that <laughs> is made, just ask, ask another time when, when we know it's okay to ask that question. No, he was I, supposed to be 15, we try to make him look as young as possible, because, you know, this is still a low-budget, um, project. So it's 
we, we don't have that much money going into it. It looks amazing for not having that much money, you know, to make it look as how we want it to. So it's low budget, so it's not like you can do this. Huh? <laughs> you guys got, like, better definition than Toei. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still low budget, though. I mean, it's really low. That's what, that's why, that's why we're always amazed when we look at it. Like, I've noticed um, most of our fight scenes are a lot better than some of the ones I've seen. Like, just most of them. Like, like um, honestly, like, in the beginning of Gaim, have you seen Kamen Rider Gaim? Oh, dude, I, I like Gaim, uh, and then I don't like, like Gaim. No, no, no. I mean, like, Gaim got better towards the end. But I mean, in the beginning, when he first yeah, transformed, like, did you see how he yeah. was fighting? Yeah, I was like, first... what? <laughs> yeah, because, like, they did the old uh, idiot gets the belt. He doesn't know what to do. Yeah, but it He's was like, so oh. weird. I was like, ah. <laughs> yeah. It was... It was so ironic, though, like, that your the suit, like, I saw a photo of the suit around the time Gaim came out, and someone actually thought Fujiyama Ichiban's suit was Kamen Rider Gaim's suit before it was revealed, and I'm just you know sitting there funny? like, nah, that's not like, it. Because I'm like, I'm like, like we're, we're hearing a lot of that. We're like, oh, Fujiyama looks like Gaim. I'm like, well, Fujiyama came out a lot earlier than Gaim, and also there's no similarity to that. Like, people are comparing it to that little crescent moon shaped on their heads. And I'm like, even that looks different. Like, <laughs> but no, nah, man, it was just so funny. Like that, that scene. Like I, I remember approaching Yuki on it, and I was just like, it's never cool. What did she say? <laughs> she, she was like, yeah, yeah. Even I, even I said that was a. We should have just got like a young kid at the dojo to come in and do do the scene. Oh, that was, <laughs> was a good idea. Yeah, that's true. I, I even said, why do you just get a younger kid to play Adam? Like <clears throat> as a kid, like why do you just do that? Yeah, we try to make him look young as possible. Because, like, me and my friends, like, we, we were reviewing the episodes on, on, a, on a show, talking about it, discussing the series, and, like, we were actually trying to re- treat it with the same respect as regular Toku. <laughs> but when we got to that scene, we were just sitting there like, what are we looking at? Like, and, like me and, and the, my co-recorder here, Visible Ninja, even said, like, twice, oh, they're just trying to do the cheap route of, if you turn the baseball cap around and you wear a certain... <laughs> Certain type of clothes. Oh, he's obviously just ten, just a couple of years younger than he is now. Even though Adam is obviously near my age. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, you're like, trying to. Because yeah. I gotta say, when, when I met all of you guys, I, even Mr. Yamato was shocked. Like I'm just like 22. <laughs> but okay, I think we you may have just been joking too. Much. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're, oh, that's how we are in the set. We joke so much. Yeah, because because Yuki said like I think it it had to be you because Yuki said yo are you talking to Travis and I'm like who's Travis? She's like oh you're gonna love him. I'm like oh. <laughs> she's like you're you're gonna get along with that guy. <laughs> yeah, we all get along. Oh yeah. Oh, also how we all became Rockman. It's um actually four of us are Rockman. All right. So the way we are together, it you know like during the little comedy sketches in the Rockman scenes. Mm-hmm. That's how we kind of are in real life. <laughs> like, like one person will be like, "Shut up!" And like, "What?" And they're like, "Well, like fake hit or whatever." Like, we always play fight. It's so funny. Now there's so four, funny. so one of you, one of you is a. Um, Two of them uh, are playing the same character. Okay, I was gonna say one's a stand-in or something. No, that's just cool. I guess whoever's there first <laughs> will okay. get that character. It's like it's like they're racing to the job. You're not getting it today. Pretty much. Or if one just feels tired, the other one will just put in. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, because I was sitting there like, like one time. I'm like, I, I think one of the funniest ones is like how Mr. Yamato literally put in. He has a cute butt. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, uh, I'm sitting there. Like, I thought that was for this show was for six, six to nine, and Mr. Yamato just hit us with like a teenage quote there, and I'm like, hold on, that let, let me let me see why. Like, that's why. Right. Remember, I said he deleted some scenes because we kept making fun of it. Because <laughs> that was actually that was, that was the safest one. Trust me. And this was oh. not even intentional. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. You guys were just ad-libbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do that sometimes when he's editing. He's like, oh, check this out. How does this look? And then, like, um, before the voice is in, like, we'll be there. And we'll just be start making our own voices. It's, it's so funny. And then, like, see, I don't, I don't even know. Well, it's a deleted scene. So I don't even know if you're ever going to see this scene because he took it out. But there's this one scene where, um, wait, did, did we play this already? I don't know. Yeah, 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 we did play it. It's when um, Fujiyama uses his marble attack against um, Rockman Blue, right? Have you seen that one? It was, like, right at the yeah. end. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. 
So Yuki has a line, and he totally took it out. <laughs> what line was it? <laughs> okay, so right after he does it, because, like, Yuki, like, they're all, Fujiyama just figured out all his powers, right? So he uses the, 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 the marbles. So one of Yuki's lines was like, wow, he has marvelous marbles. <laughs> <laughs> and we kept making fun of it so much. They're like, oh, yeah, he has marvelous marbles, huh? <laughs> He's like, oh, this is so bad. I gotta delete it. I'm sorry. So, like, in the show, all you hear is say, wow. Like, that was it. And he just took out the rest of the line. <laughs> like, Oh, my God. That is too good. <laughs> like, you guys were making test- testicle jokes off that line? Yeah, it's, we were doing it so much that he was like, okay, if you guys are doing it this many, that means the fans are going to probably do that. So, <laughs> we're going to have to take it off. <laughs> Oh my god, that that is amazing. I'm just sitting here like now, like uh, the next time I talk to Yuki, I'm gonna be like, so those marvelous marbles, Yuki, and she's gonna be like, who told you this? Uh, she'll probably be a while before she'll catch on to that because it took her a while to understand why we were laughing. Yeah, I noticed. Like I was, I, I noticed like she said something in our in our interview that I had to ca- cut out because I was laughing because she said something and I was like, like you know, it just came out of your mouth. And you're like. Uh, repeat what I just said, and then I repeated it. She's like, "Yeah, let's let's cut. Let me rewind yeah, that." She's very innocent. Yeah, she won't realize it until you like. She was really so, tell it. she was so innocent because like like I'm like okay, let's let's do this interview, and she was like, "Oh, we could all." She's like, "I know." She's like, "I know you're recording this for dictation and and audio." And like she puts on her camera, and I'm sitting here like, "I don't even have a camera. This is this is weird." <laughs> like this is weird. She has her camera on, but I'm like, I, I don't got a camera. So I'm like, this just is really, I'm like, I don't feel right. I feel dirty. <laughs> You're just looking I, at her. <laughs> like, like I'm just like, I'm sitting there. I'm like, I, I don't got a camera. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, I don't want to go over and get the camera from the other room. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want, and I'm just sitting there. I'm like, oh, no, nah, I've been shaved. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I literally just woke up for this interview. I'm not, no, I can't do this camera thing. And then her, and then her computer crashed. And so she's on the phone and I'm like, thank you. Thank, right. thank you, somebody. So I don't feel wrong. <laughs> yeah, she's a really nice girl though. She's fun. That was just so funny. <laughs> yeah, that 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 whole there's other ones, but I think that was like the best one ever. Like we like we were even trying to be serious about it. Every time we kept hearing that line, we were just cra- like cracking up. We were just like, man, we cannot be mature about this line. Like it's just <laughs> it's just so funny. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's it's like uh, our crew is amazing. Like I, I I love our crew. Like. Sometimes when I'm on set doing other stunts for, like, other short films and all that, like, there's always problems. Like, someone's always mad at somebody. And it's just like, wow, like, seriously, like, it's not that serious. Like, just fix the problem and move on. We can, let's get this movie over. Because when someone's feeling bad, you're not going to get the right scene or the right shot. So, yeah. Because someone's, like, not feeling it. So, yeah, we are always nice. Yeah, I, I, I can say one thing, though, is... um. Like I, I I like how you guys actually have that um like kind of it factor for being so independent, and I also feel like because you guys are so small, it's not getting to like the the medium you guys want, and it, it's hard because like I I sit there and I'm like okay so we're kind of like an official member of the Fujiyama Ichiban faction in a sense because we're actually on like your posters and we're yeah. promoting the episodes and I'm sitting there like. Like, I feel like we don't, like, I sit there, I'm like, I feel like we're doing what we can, but we can't, we can't do too much. Yeah. Because of who, who and where we are. Yeah. So, like, what I'll say is, um, I, I say, I say, Sakura's arc, I think that's gonna skyrocket. I, that's I, from, so much better. Try. From, from what Mr. Yamato and, uh, even Yuki have said, and was, like, the Sakura, like, everything after the first couple of episodes are gonna be better than, like, the A first lot. four. Yes. Yes, a lot better. And, like, Mr. Yamato practically spoiled season one to me in the interview, and I was like... Oh, he did? Oh. Like, he kinda did he spo- like, he kind of was like... like He's like, as, like, the guy writing the series, like, I have this choice later for w- the season. It's, I either make the Rockmen turn good, or they stay being bad working for another organization. And I'm like, I just asked for, like, possibility of, like, some clues... Mm-hmm. Not like straight up spoilers, man. Like, like you just gave me like a synopsis to like uh, an episode. Like, I'm like, okay. oh well, he changed his mind, so that's not gonna happen. So, <laughs> all right, good. I, I, already, I already know what's gonna happen for like all the way up to like season like three or four. So, now, now I got a I'm question. Sorry, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> how how are your seasons broken up by the grouping of the four episodes, or is it more than that? Because when you I first like... asked him, 
he said it was going to be like 13 web webisodes are, is a season, like mm-hmm. an actual TV series. But then okay. talking to Yuki, she said it was going to be every time there's a break, it's actually a small micro season. Okay, this is how it was going to start off originally. It was going to start off as a long movie. That's how it was going to start off. And then he decided to break it off into episodes. So everything we've shot is season one. He's just breaking it off to short little episodes. Mm-hmm. So so Sakura, the Sakura story is still part of season one of what we did, the first four episodes we put up. And then there's another arc, which is still part of season one, is what I think this last one, oh my god, is going to like make everybody just like, we can't wait for season two. This last one, Sakura is better. This last one's ten times better than the Sakura. That's all I can say to you, man. Ten right. times better. Ten times better. Like I, I, I know you can't like, tell you, me you, while like even recording. <laughs> like even yeah. recording. Like you can give me like clues, but you can't do it while we're recording. <laughs> yeah, like ten times better. Like you're gonna think the first episode was like okay. Like you wouldn't think they were made by the same people. That's how. That's what you'd probably think. <laughs> like. Yeah, yeah, because I've seen like Mr. Yamato is directing when it comes to the stunts for Beetleborgs and Mask Rider, and like mm-hmm. when you watch when he does the stunt choreography and then works with the Saban guys to clip in the Japanese scenes, I'm sitting here like, this is better than the actual show that was written at the time because it was too kiddie fud. <laughs> oh, oh, it's because um, for this one, like he he wants more, like for for the fighting, he wants more of like you know. To make it look cool, make it look like something like, oh, that was awesome. Like something that no other tokusakus fought in the, like, the way they fought before. He wants it like that, and you'll definitely see that in the third arc. Like, oh my gosh. Like, I, 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 so, and I was I, like, wow, we did that? Like, that, we didn't even, didn't even seem like we did that, but we did it. Like, wow. Like, I can tell you guys are going to have, like, a lot to work. What? Uh, you kind of skipped that in here, what you said. Oh, no, I was going to say, yeah, you guys are really going to have to ha- have something to be that ace in the hole, because Tokusatsu evolves, like, every five years on what they can add to make it crazier. Yeah, and that's that's that, that's how we think we're, we're going to do good in uh, America, because they're all used to it in Japan. We're going to, we're kind of mixing it a little bit, so I think that's going to be our little ace right there. Now, I got a question. Have you ever seen Kamen Rider Dragonite and watched its stunts? Oh, no, I have not seen that one. Okay, I would, I would say if you guys want to like like see some cool ideas watch that because in Kamen Rider Dragonite the adaptation for Kamen Rider Ryuki they added in a lot of par- parkour like fight fight stunts where like people were hanging on the side of the railings on like you know uh crosswalks between buildings mhm so they 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 did a lot of ingenuity and they actually won uh I think daytime emmys for best action show oh, okay i want to say more <laughs> Yeah, like so I said, I, I, arc three, ten times better. Yeah, because I'm, I'm saying they're like, like they, th- those guys, those guys. I remember they they really amped up for Tokusatsu. I'm sitting here, I'm like, if Mr. Yamato says he can do it, I'm like, I'm pretty sure he can do it. I mean, That's it. we can do it. Trust me, we can do it. <laughs> all right, and our last couple of questions are, um, what would you say to persuade people or try to get people into actually watching Fujami Ichiban? What what words do you have to say? Like things. I would say be patient. Trust me. For like, cause like this first episode, I was like, okay, be patient for season two. And I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed at all. Like that, that's all I could say. (laughs) All right. Uh, what are your words of wisdom for people trying to become stuntmen? (laughs) Um, my words of wisdom, my, my biggest one is just be safe. Safety first, no matter what you do. Like, like you don't have to be really good at it, just as long as you're safe. Because, um, like, be safe, train train as much as you can in whatever stunt you're trying to do. But safety is number one priority. To me, that, like, that's the biggest one. If you can do it, do it. If you can't, make sure you let the director know you cannot do it, because he will make sure. He would rather have you safe than you injured trying to do something you're, you're not able to do. All right. And to finish it all off, do you have social media accounts like YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook where fans can contact you? Oh, yeah, I do. All right. Uh, all right can, you, can you tell us, like, what uh, places where fans can contact you? I know your YouTube, but, you know. Our oh, actually, don't use the YouTube one. That one, I just had it. I just only posted the video on YouTube so I can, like, 
take the YouTube link and put it somewhere else. Yeah, okay. YouTube, yeah, that's not a fan thing. That was just, you know, when I was a lot younger. I think that Fujiyama one's like the most updated one. <laughs> okay, so. Um, <clears throat> Facebook, you can contact me there. I mean, yeah, I'm mostly on that. Um, yeah, there's Facebook. I have a Twitter, but I kind of don't use it because I'm too busy dealing with the Fujiyama Twitter. And oh, uh, you're the Fujiyama Twitter, yeah. Sometimes, mostly. Oh, so you, <laughs> so you're the one they, maybe talking to me. <laughs> when the when the English seems good, that's probably me. <laughs> okay, now, now now I know who I'm talking to. Sometimes, 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 yeah. So I'll I'll be on Twitter. Yeah, there's no point in using mine because I'll just be updating everything I do on the Fujiyama one. If I if I I normally do it when we have things to do. All right, because I was gonna say because I know a couple of direct messages like the English would switch between people, so I'm sitting there and I'm like, who's writing this? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, some of them's me. Like I, I do the the Facebook one as well sometimes. So you're uh, in a sense when Mr. Yamato doesn't know what people are saying, it's you. Or, like or, you like or I just do it on my own time. Like, if I just look at a message and if he hasn't answered it, I'll answer it. All right, cool, cool. Yeah. So I mean, like, I know who I'm talking to. Sometimes, yeah. So, like, yeah, like, sometimes when people are like, oh, you guys were great, and if he hasn't replied, I'll reply to you guys. I'll be like, oh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for the support. Or, like, whatever, yeah. Yeah, I know when, like, the, the coming up stuff appears, like, the photos and that, it's normally him. Yeah, I don't know when he does that. When he just does it, he does it. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, cool. Um, anyways, this has been our interview with Travis Hall, stuntman on Fujiyama Ichiban, Rockman Red, both voice and suit. Uh, I thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, you can pretty much come back whenever ever you feel free. <laughs> like, just hit me up. Be like, hey, want to hang out? Whatever. We can do stuff like that. I mean, we have podcasts. We have other stuff where, <laughs> you, you know, your talents probably could be featured. Just be so, like, just interrupt another interview. Rockman Red has come to. I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, like that actually be pretty funny. We get like one of those jokes. <laughs> I, I I could see us doing something like that. We we, we are yeah, kind of those kind of people. Technology. Well, also I kind of feel like um the fans don't know the story of Fujiyam Ichiban. So like, if you like need any questions about that, I can answer some of those to like fill out the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, then. So uh, with that, you know, it's getting my charge. Uh, I think this has been our interview with Travis Hall, and we'll see you next time. All right. Later, guys. All right. <laughs>